I know you're having a hard time climbing in your games. The problem is every rank is different and you're not getting tailored advice that can help you get from your specific rank to the next. On top of this, the mistakes of someone in Masters is never gonna be the same as the mistakes of someone in Bronze. That being said, I'm gonna be breaking down one do and don't for every rank, so let's just jump right in and get those SR games. So kicking it off with the first rank, we have Bronze. And for the first do in Bronze, you need to start playing and learning the game much more. The fact of the matter is, Bronze players don't play the game anywhere near enough to develop fundamentals in general and if you're in bronze more often than not you just need to play the game more now if you have been in bronze for a little while and you're still stuck here's some more things that you can do you need to start accelerating your development on game sense and mechanical skill by pushing the envelope as far as impact be more aggressive be more impactful be adventurous in your positioning see what you can get away with that's the easiest way to develop your game sense faster bronze can be very deathmatch-esque a lot of fraggings going on and many players never know just how aggressive they could be and most players default to passive play styles here's the biggest takeaway passivity is the easiest way to get hard stuck especially in bronze or any of the lower tier ranks a general rule of thumb is most players will fail to punish you even if you are over aggressive so there's a lot more value that you're leaving on the table by being extremely passive now moving along to the don'ts as far as bronze is concerned do not worry about the meta or what people tell you to play down in bronze everything is viable in bronze if you follow the simple rule get kills don't die even if you're a support a tank still get kills and don't die you're a Ryan, swing in get shatters you're an honor shoot the enemy hit them with nades dps of course just do what dps do get kills don't die you do this more in bronze and you will climb never ever trust your team if you want to climb you need to have expressive value on the table in the form of kills that relies on no team help don't be pocketing your ride over and over again because in bronze you cannot rely on that ride to do literally anything you need to be the one that's making proactive impact this also means do not play heroes that specifically rely on teammates whether you're a support a tank or a dps you need to not rely on synergistic things with your team and instead play characters that are better at being proactive by themselves so a good example of this is something like mercy don't just play mercy and pocket a dps and bronze because like i said you don't trust your teammates down in bronze do not try to enable that mccree because he might just miss every shot or do nothing or just play extremely passive or who knows what he's gonna do you need to be the one making aggressive value aggressive plays that is how you climb out of bronze but in reality climbing out of bronze silver gold plat diamond all these ranks are extremely easy if you get gameleaf.com on the gameleaf.com website right now we have multiple in-depth videos being released on the daily so if you want high quality overwatch content do yourself a favor and go check it out you'll be so happy with your sr gains now moving on to silver the first do is you need to find a specialty this is really important once you start climbing up if you pick one role and a small set of heroes you'll become fully mechanically comfortable much quicker and you'll be able to practice the maximum amount on these heroes level up faster which is really good for your development as a player so i'd really suggest that another thing that you should really do is make sure to learn about your hero matchups versus other characters if your favorite character is mccree learn the matchups against genji what do you do in that matchup what what do you what's your game plan if you're up against a tracer what's your game plan maybe it's try to shoot her try to flash banger whatever maybe you're up against a rhine or an ana and you think about what abilities these characters have and how you can shut them down with your kit you can really think of it simplistically as a 1v1 what's your game plan the best way to learn this in my opinion especially for support and dps is in triad free for all because you're going to be able to get compounded with these matchups over and over again it's a lot harder to learn these on tank you have to really learn these in game on tank but that's my best way if you want to be accelerated especially for you dps players triad free for all so the don't for silver is don't play every role like we talked about before and don't play a different hero every game you don't really need to worry about winning right now. Just worrying about getting better because once you get better, you will 100% climb. You might not believe me here with Elo Hell and all that stuff, but I made a whole bunch of videos about it. If you get better here, you get more value. You're able to hard carry, get more kills, emit more value. You will climb right out of silver. Do not worry about just winning. Just worry about improving. And the way to do that is by really hyper-focusing on the characters and really becoming mechanically honed, learning your matchups, all these factors. And then lastly, you still don't rely on teammates. And just try to get kills and don't die. This is going to be a general rule of thumb for bronze, silver, and gold most likely. But that's pretty much all it simplifies down to. So. so moving on to the next rank is gold. And the first do for gold is start trying to perfect and practice ultimate use. Many games are won and lost based on how good you are at getting value on ultimates. I mean, 
Practice dragon blading in training rooms. Practice pulse bombs against bots. Primal rages even. There's so many different things that you can practice specifically about ultimates. This is a really powerful thing that you need to do. It's pretty simple, but I think that it's really important to climb out of gold. You need that big oomph of value, and you want each and every ultimate to get a certain level of value to help you climb. Now, the don't for this rank is don't waste abilities. Keep each and every intent in mind. If you use your nade as Ana, self-nade, for only 10 HP, what potential did you miss out on using your nade aggressively? A three-man nade would have won you the fight, but instead, you just healed yourself for 10 HP. Extreme misuse of your resources, and this happens immensely at lower ranks. Another thing is, did you just fire your sleep randomly? Then you're not going to have it for when the Doomfist comes and tries to kill you if your sleep is on cooldown. Now, this is okay that you can't sleep the Doom because everyone knows that down in gold, you get peel from both your DPS and your tanks consistently, right? No? Yeah, save your sleep dart so that you can sleep the Doom Fist. Now moving on to the next rank, we have Plat. And in Plat, you need to start paying attention to how many times you die in every game and how you die. You need to track what you're dying to and why. Don't just blame your team because that's completely useless for your development as a player. 99% of the time, if you die first or second in a team fight, it's because you misplayed and mispositioned. You need to start slowly correcting your mistakes in plat because in plat, players make hundreds and hundreds of mistakes and if you could start slowly eating those away, that is how you're also going to start climbing as plat. Best thing to do, really pay attention to how you're dying. Try to make it so you're never the first one dead. Now the thing that you need to stop doing in plat is you need to to stop using your ultimate in a team fight that's already won and you also need to make sure that you invest when you 100% need to okay by this point in the game you really need to start paying attention to the top right corner looking at who is alive and dead on both teams how many of your team is alive how many of the enemy team is alive let's say it's three and three an ultimate can swing that advantage and you know that you need to invest but let's say you only have two players and the enemy has six how much value do you think your ultimate is going to get do you think it's going to be able to bridge a four person gap and still you're going to be able to win out a scrappy 2v2 most likely not understanding when you can use your ultimate to put your team over the edge to win the team fight or when you should just hold it instead that is what you need to start doing in plat in general you need to be realistic about the average amount of value you get per ultimate don't average your dragon blades at three to five kills because that's not realistic for every scenario maybe average your dragon blade at one to two kills so if it's a 3v3 you activate dragon blade you can turn that close fight and win the team fight definitively but do not try to turn fights that don't make sense and also if you need to turn a disadvantage a slight one you definitely need to invest ultimates don't be passive on this concept now moving on to the next rank is diamond and the first doing diamond is make sure that you have identified what you lack and then start grinding it you need a certain mechanical skill, a certain amount of game sets and positioning in order to get to masters. No more being carried by one aspect of your play. At the previous ranks, if you had good game sense, positioning, or mechanics, any one of the three, you could have climbed all the way to plat. You could have climbed all the way to diamond. But if you want to get to masters, that's not going to cut it anymore. You need to start reviewing your own gameplay or getting a coach to review them. And then you need to figure out exactly what you need to work on as a player. Positioning game sense, mechanics, or a culmination of the three. Watching kill cams is extremely good. Take a note when you fail to execute gameplays and when you got punished for poor positioning. Now, the thing that you need to don't do in Diamond, you need to stop playing on shitty hardware. If you're using bad controllers, really poor mouses. If you're on PC, you're just using a 60 hertz monitor. You're playing on a laptop. Make sure that your hardware is good. And if you have a PC, max out FPS and get a 144 hertz monitor minimum. You need to start having good tools here because as you get to masters and grandmaster, everyone's going to have way better hardware. Don't hold yourself back with bad hardware, whether you're on console or PC. Give yourself the best tools to perform and play the most amount of hours. That is how you set yourself up to succeed. Now, moving on to master's rank, the first do is... You need to start paying attention to the meta more and make sure that you can at least fill within it in some capacity. And if you do not play meta, you need to have a game plan to play against meta. Sure, maybe the meta isn't Sombra, but if you have a game plan to play against the meta of Ryan May and you know exactly what you could do to get value into that comp or into the meta comp, that is how you go in with the mindset to succeed. 
Another thing is you can also just play meta characters extremely well to climb, but you need to also keep the matchups in mind. If you're Ryan, think about this, like in this meta, having a plan to bait out a Maywall or flashing a bubble Ryan shield as McCree. These are interactions between the meta characters that you need to perfect and master that will really help you climb through masters. If you know the meta, you know how to play with it and around it, how to apply all these different factors into getting you the win in each and every game. Now, the thing that you need to not do in Masters is do not let yourself get farmed. In Masters, you're going to start going up against top 500 and Grandmaster players every once in a while. No matter what the situation is, do not let yourself get farmed. Do not let yourself get rolled over and over again. You need to start adapting to your situation. And no matter who you are or who you're up against, you need to keep your mistakes as low as possible. And if the enemy is abusing you specifically to get team fight wins or free value, you need to swap off. You need to change up your play style. You need to play a character that hard counters them. Whatever you have to, do not let yourself be the one that is bringing the team down in any situation, no matter what. Even if you have to adopt a pla more passive playstyle to prevent from feeding, that is just how you're going to have to go about it because it's better than getting farmed fight after fight. Now, moving on to Grandmaster. The thing that you need to do when you get to Grandmaster is pat yourself on the back. You made it, but your work is not done. You want to climb even farther than this. The first thing that you need to do is learn how to push the balance of impact as far as possible without getting punished. This is a really interesting concept, but the thing that you need to understand about this is understand that you need to respect enemies and their ability to punish you, yes, but over-respecting enemies can turn into a flaw. The tighter the positioning and the cleaner your mechanics, the more that you could do and get away with while still getting punished less by the enemies. If your flanks are extremely clean, if your mechanics are extremely clean, the window of time to punish you is going to be so tiny while you're making these proactive plays and the better you are at positioning mechanics transitions all these things the more likely you're going to be able to pull off an insanely proactive play and get away from it scot-free this is what grandmasters do better and better and this is what top 500s do so well their transition time their mechanics everything is like maxed out so that they know how to push the envelope to such a high level with still not getting punished now the thing that you need to not do in grandmaster is you need to and not stop evolving and stop learning. At this level, everyone is like a streamer, a hardcore grinder, or on the path to pro. If you want to compete, you need to constantly improve and push yourself, iron out each and every mistake, and be a better player in every single game, slightly better than the game before. Masters players in the rank below you want your spot, and top 500 players in the rank above you will do everything in their power to gatekeep you from their ranks. Use the tracks that the pros laid out. You can learn from them and you can learn even faster than they learned because you do not have to tread water. You get to watch them do it. And in every esport that players have played in, many players that dominated the esports scene in the beginning quickly get overshadowed by players that come after. And those players kind of get to maximize their practice time. They get to maximize their fundamentals and all these things. This can be you if you're willing to put in the work. It's not too late to climb to top 500 or even go pro if you're willing to put the work in at this this rate if you're willing to follow through and put in all the hours and effort i believe in you but that's not the only thing i believe in i also believe in the quality of content found at gameleap.com i mean gameleap.com does something that no one else can do and we push out content daily multiple videos that give you in-depth insights so if you like videos like this or any of the videos that we put out gameleap.com is even higher quality videos you would be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't at least go check it out anyways that's all i have for you today if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below i'm coach mills and until next time